a few years back, my friend told me that he was sitting in a shul, and in between Mincha and Marev, I guess a little unlike what we do these days, the rabbi was giving a brief halachic, a Jewish legal exposition in between Mincha and Marev while they were waiting for the time to pray. So my friend was sitting in the back, it was a shul that he didn't usually go to, and he got to overhear a little bit of the discussion that takes place in the peanut gallery. So these two men, for the most part, they weren't paying so much attention to what the rabbi was saying. And at the end of the speech, one of them turns to his friend and says, you know, what was the rabbi talking about for the past 10, 15 minutes? Ah, don't worry, he just said, be a good person. Ah, shkoyach. So that means, essentially, we could sum up every single speech. We don't need to go to Shurim anymore. We don't need to attend classes. We don't need to come to sermons. We could sum everything up by saying, just be a good person, right? Well, the issue is, how is one supposed to be a good person? We just went through Tisha B'Av, and I'm sure if there's one term we've heard ad nauseum, it's sinas chinam. We were told probably by many, multiple rabbis, multiple speakers, many times that the reason our temple was destroyed was because of sinas chinam. Baseless hatred. People didn't treat each other properly. They didn't respect one another. But you know, there's another reason that was given in the Gemara. And it's a reason that's a little less popular. And there's a good chance that we haven't heard that over the course of the three weeks and over the course of Tisha B'Av. The Gemara Meseches Nadar in the Talmud, our rabbis teach, It says in the Pasuk that we should go and we should ask who's a wise person understands why the temple was destroyed. This question, it went to the wise men, it went to the prophets, and even they could not answer it. Until God had to come along himself and give us the answer. Why our holy temple was destroyed. As it's written in Jeremiah. For they have forsaken my Torah. They did not listen to my voice. Meaning they did not walk in my path. Amar Vrihud Amarav, what does that mean? What did they specifically neglect to do? I would think other reasons that were given in the Talmud, maybe idolatry, sexual promiscuity, immorality, murder. No, none of those. She'ein mevarchim b'Torah t'chila. They neglected to recite a blessing prior to learning God's Torah. That's the reason? That's the reason that the temple was destroyed and we were sent into exile because we forgot to make a blessing. We neglected to make a blessing before studying God's Torah. I don't know. I would think, you know, I set aside time to study God's Torah. That should be good enough. That? What? So if I forgot to make an Asha Yatsar blessing when I leave the facilities, I should also, the temple should be destroyed for that? If I forget to make a bracha chrona, I don't thank God after I eat an orange, I should also have the temple destroyed because of that? Something seems a little off. This seems, you know, a little underwhelming. Why was the temple destroyed for this reason? The Ran, one of the medieval commentaries on this Talmud, on this uh, on the Talmud, tells us, "Klomar, what was the sin? Shelo haisa atayrech hashuva b'neim kol kach sheiroy levarich eleha." The Torah. It's not that they forgot to make a blessing on the Torah. It's that the Torah was not significant enough to them that it merited a blessing prior to learning it. They didn't learn it because it was God's Torah. And what does it mean they didn't walk in the ways of God? They mezazel it. They cheapened it. They treated it just like any other branch of knowledge. They treated the Torah the same way they would study. They would read anything. They would open up the Wall Street Journal or the Times in the morning to read the news. All right, so they'd also set aside some time to learn Torah as well. When I was growing up, uh, I went to Yeshiva Dark Torah in Farakaway. And when I, I still remember this. When I was in 10th grade, we had, to, we had a Bible, a Chumash test, every Sunday. And uh, my Rebbe, the rabbi of the class, asked me what I was doing. And I said, oh, I'm studying for the, for the, I'm studying the Chumash. I'm studying the Bible for the test coming up. 
And he said to me, you don't study Chumash, you don't study Torah, you learn Torah. You study math, you study science, you study social studies in English. But Torah is not just another subject. Torah is the Word of God. And the Word of God, while of course it is a branch of knowledge, it is so much more than that. It transcends all else. It is the immutable and it's the infinite knowledge that God has provided us. And we need to treat that differently and recognize the gift that we have, the significance of the Torah that we are granted. The Jewish people in the times of the temple, they did not appreciate the gift that God gave us. They did not appreciate the Torah HaKadoshah, that the Torah was something different, was something unique, was something that transcended the bounds of everything else. And because of that, they didn't forget to make a blessing. They didn't think it was worth making a blessing on it. And that's why God had to destroy the Beis HaMikdash. So what does it mean to be a good person? A good person doesn't just respect other people. That's a huge part of it. We have commandments that are being Adam Lechavero, that are between me and my fellow human being. I need to respect my neighbor. Of course I do. And that is part and parcel of being a good person. But another part of being a good person is the other side of the dichotomy. The Bein Adam Lamakom. I have to also respect God. Respect his Torah. And recognize and appreciate the gift and privilege that we are given. And it's only by doing both. By having the Bein Adam Lechavero. Respecting others. But also remembering that it's not just about respecting others. That's a conclusion I can come to on my own, hopefully. But respecting God's Torah, that is integral. And it's with that mutual respect going into Shabbos Nachamu that I hope and I pray and I bless us that God willing, we will see a future Nechama. We will see a salvation. We will have ultimate consolation from God in the merit of not only respecting those around us, but recognizing and appreciating the gift of the Torah, and the gift of our religion that God has granted to us. Have a wonderful Shabbos, and please enjoy Shabbos Nachamu.